Guys, Joe McDonough here with my MMA news, joined by UFC stud, comma, worthy, comma. How are you, my friend? It's good, brother. I'm pretty good, man. Can't complain. Absolutely. Uh, you know, take me through 2020 for you. I mean, I you know, I've talked to a, a bunch of fighters, a plethora of fighters. And, um, you know, I mean, just some said it was the worst year ever. Some said it was awesome. Uh, you know, I mean, talk to me, you know, not only from a fighting standpoint, but just being a person in 2020. Yeah, I mean, it was an experience. <laughs> it, it, it kind of like, I like, just put it that way. Like experiences can have multiple different outcomes to them. Uh, like I went one-on-one -on -one as a fighter. I had a lot of experience. I had freaking fights canceled, short notice fights, fight pop up, all kind of stuff. Um Forgot caught COVID. My gym got shut down. I mean, like, there's a lot, a lot, a lot went yeah. down. So, I mean, it was a learning experience, though. Like, you, you can learn from everything. So, it definitely was a, a learning experience. And, you know, like you said, you went one on one. I believe that was your first loss since 2017. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. And yeah, I'm pretty but... sure right around there. So, I mean, been a while. I mean, you know, you were on a, a huge, great streak. Um, you know, take me through that first loss in, in that long and kind of the lessons that come with you know, that first loss when, when winning has been your way for the last three plus years? Um, I mean, I, the fight was so fucking short. Everyone keeps asking that. I, I didn't really learn anything from it. Like a minute <laughs> and 40 seconds, not really much you can learn. Like mm -hmm. if I would have win three rounds and, and got lost to decision or three rounds, got knocked out in the third round, you can kind of watch it. But like, you, you can't really, I mean, like, I mean, I know I rushed a little bit, I rushed a little bit too much. Uh, that was my first really big, I mean, that's my third fight in the UFC. And it was a co-main event. So, I think that all happened so – my whole UFC cure was just exploding so fast. It was moving so rapid. I think I got kind of caught up into the uh, the uh, experience and not, like, really paying attention to the fight itself. So that was the lesson that I learned from that fight. It's like, do each fight with the fight. Because like, I was thinking, like, Danny White was like, oh, next – what the winner of this fight is going to be top 15. That's all I could yeah. think about. Was this. <laughs> co I'm like, I'm three fights in the UFC – I'm co-main event. It normally takes people like four years or three years to get at that, two years. To get. I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, shit, yeah. the only way up from a co-main event is a main event. Then I was like, oh, shit. So, and my <laughs> brain was overthinking. I'm yeah. overthinking all that dumb shit instead of thinking about the fight. And I think when it came time to fight, like I wasn't, I wasn't zoned in like I normally am because I was thinking about outside things that I have no control over. I have to control the one. I have to do the thing I want, thing I have to take over. And that's, that's the fight itself. So, for me, I think that was the biggest learning experience. But, like, besides the, in the fight, where I mean, I threw a bad kick because I thought he was pressing the other way. He pressed the other way, and he jumped on top of it. So mm -hmm. nothing, nothing I can take from that. You know, uh, take, talk to me about Jamie Malarkey. I mean, was this the goal, uh, you know, to, to kind of just get right back in there? Uh, you know, he's 0-2 in the UFC. Like you said, you've already been in a co-main event spot. You know, you've got a big name yourself. You know, did you want a bigger name or was it kind of like whatever Dana, whatever Sean Shelby, whatever my manager calls and says, this person wants to fight, I want to get back in there, get in the win column. Yeah, screw big names, man, because big <laughs> names are making big money. I I, I I just signed my second contract with the UFC, so my manager worked on that, so I signed the second contract. So I'm making a little bit more money. But like everyone, like everyone's like, oh, top fifteen. I'm like, dude, you know what money they make? Yeah. Like, fuck that. I'm not. I'm not gonna be making a quarter of what someone's making. We're and we're both taking the same amount of damage. Like the UFC isn't really about like rank, and in, in my especially in my division, the ranking and shit doesn't mean anything. Like like people, like you get fight, fights just happen wherever they are. So I, I'm just here. I'm here to make a decent amount of money. So I'm gonna fight my level according wise. Like I'm gonna fight people on my same pay grade. You know, and is there any part of you that, you know, coming off the loss that feels you wanted to make a big splash here or, you know, is that something that doesn't cross your mind? Uh, it certainly does for a little bit. But then then like I, I was accepted a lot. But now he got caught with potatoes or whatever the fuck he was carrying. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. So like, the rumor, I'm, the rumor is potatoes. <laughs> I'm 100 percent sure that motherfucker was carrying in steroids. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Like, because if they, the best that they could do is say he was carrying potatoes, he was he was doing something he was he wasn't supposed to. It, it is a bizarre did, a bizarre example. Like potato, you know what I mean? It's just so <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. Like his brother just got popped. His brother just admitted that he was using. Right? He just took his suspension, so he was using. Your brother was using you and your brother are main training partners. You guys are like always together. He's using, and now you get caught sneaking something onto the ultimate island where they give us everything, and you say it's some special Moroccan potato or some shit. Yeah, and steroids stuck inside of it. But I to mean, like point, I, I, to the point where you know Dana White 
cut him on the spot. You know what I mean? You know, there, there's, it, he was cut on the spot at, the, at first, you know? So, um, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, again, it doesn't have anything to do with me. Like, I, I'm trying to get at that's something I don't have any control over, so I don't really give a fuck. But in a sense, the person I just like, like, okay, you just lost this person. And then he gets caught trying to sneak stuff on. I'm like, it's it's in your, it's so blatantly. And then they come out and they say, it's like, oh, yeah, I was sneaking on potatoes. Yeah. Okay. It's just like, all right, I just deal with it. Go on. <laughs> move the fuck on. Like, let yeah. it be with it. Well, congratulations on the multi-fight deal. Um, you know, you don't have to give us the specifics, but, you know, is, is it three-fight, five-fight? Um, you know, could you give us anything? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a four-fight deal. Four, four more fights. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, talk to me about your gym. You know, you're not, you're, you're one of the guys that's not from, you know, the huge American top teams, the AKAs. I mean, you train with your brother and some other guys down in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Academy, you know, talk to me about the, uh, the Academy. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, my gym's a small gym. We have about, uh, about five or six pros to train out here. And then we have about another like six or seven pros to train in the circle area. Uh, like I got to train my little brother. Uh, he's a pro. I have another amateur. It's about to go pro. Should have been pro now. COVID kind of messed up his thing. I have another pro fighter. Uh, then I train with John Diasus. He fights in Bellator. He's one of my main mm-hmm. training partners. Uh, Nick Brown, who sh- you should be in the UFC already. I'm not too sure what the fuck they're waiting for. Like he comes up here. And he brings up one of his one of his training partners. My man Ethan. He's been giving me good work. And then I, I go to Matt Factory, and there's, like, guys like um, uh, Don Manzala's up there. Uh, uh, Dalton Ross used to be up there. Freaking um, um, Chris Dempsey trains out of there. He's one of my main. He, he still works and trains with me. And then I go down to a couple other gyms and get some more work. I got some pro boxers to come through, too. So I go, go to stop. So, I mean, I, I got a good a good bit of pro fighters. They're, they're sp- we're spread out, but we're pretty unique and we're pretty advanced. I mean, I've been to big gyms. It's it's just more people. Like, my coaching staff was what makes, was what makes my uh, – my my gym good. Like I have a phenomenal uh, my head coach Dave, the MMA coach is Dave Sachs, a D one wrestler. Uh, he's fought all over. He used to train American top team. He trained up in up in Chicago I and mean, he's been training forever. High level wrestler, good experience in MMA. My boxing coach, Chris Williams, he coaches high level pro boxers and stuff, so he gets us ready for a boxer, but he adjusted for MMA. And then my head coach, uh Master uh Dan, I call him Master White Fan. Like he's a world <laughs> world class kickboxer. He's been kickboxing since he was like six. He's been doing it forever, and he knows the sport. And he's been, and like the stuff that he showed me, it works. It works better on, on on people when I when I when I go and fight. And these people like are going and like getting these big name coaches and shit, and they're just showing you basic ass shit. Mm-hmm. And um, and then like I said, like when it comes to Matt Factor and stuff like that's some of the like Pittsburgh, PA is some of the we have some of the best wrestlers in the world. Like fuck Kazakhstan or whatever the fuck they're at. Like, we'll whoop. <laughs> I'll take my PA wrestlers. I'll take my PA wrestlers any fucking day. So oh, I mean, yeah. like, we have them and a lot of black belts and stuff. So I mean, I'm, I'm I think I'm prepared for everything. Absolutely, man. And, and you know, tell me, like you you mentioned, you know, your brother. You know, I've talked to your brother a couple times. Um, you know, and a couple other prospects that, should, like you said, should be in the UFC. You know, you said 2020s kind of fucked that up, or COVID's kind of fucked right. that up. Um, I mean, what what is the advice that you give to these guys? from this year i mean because because you know you're here you're in the ufc you've went through it but you know for prospects a lot of the time especially this past year it's essentially been putting their career on hold there's not been many regional shows i mean right. what what have you been telling them i mean like you like, i just tell them that like like again like you can't control things you don't have control over some people fucking didn't make it out of 2020 you did that's a that's a fucking you're one up in the mario game you know what i mean so yeah. I, I just tell them i'm like yo don't don't overthink it don't don't dwell too much on things that you're not getting and just be positive with the things you are getting. You know what I mean? Like, so and that's, that's just been my whole career. Like my whole career, like um, I've been kind of like second or third place to everyone as they push other, other fighters in the, in the direction towards the USC or towards the bigger promotion. And I've never really second guessed myself and I've never really second guessed the process. Like, the process for fighting is hard. This is a very hard, like, process it's, it's not something that i i tell i tell most people to think they want to fight i tell them don't do it <laughs> but you know <laughs> like, yo, yeah, don't yeah, fucking do it yeah. i'm like it's not it's not like, especially younger guys that come in here like oh i want to do this i'm like no you don't <laughs> you want to almost go broke you want to live in your car you want to lose mm-hmm. all your friends all, all your girls and all that I'm like if you're not prepared to do that don't do this shit because it's not it doesn't go the way you think it should and then like think about it right and then you get to the ufc and then, like, then you have to, then you still have to win. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Or you'll just be like two fights and you're out, you're kicked out of UFC. Yeah. I mean, how many people, 
Like, I like people always talk about how they feel bad for like the big name guys. I'm like, I don't feel bad for big name guys losing or getting knocked out or getting kicked out of the UFC. I'm like, those guys have made money. I feel bad for the guys that get to UFC, go 0 and three, and and they're and they're done. I'm like, dude, that's a fucking heart. That yeah, and I mean, uh, really I good. just I just interviewed you know with Peter Barrett. He went 0 and two in the UFC, and he and he he was released. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. so I 100 percent agree. That's brutal. That's a brutal feeling. You're like, damn, man, you've been pushing this hard. You get there, then boom. And, and and then you have to have the adversity to keep to keep going. So it's not a, it's not this job isn't an easy job. Mm-hmm. I, I it, it sucks because it's popular right now, right? Like it's yeah. like yeah, MMA, yeah, every, everyone everyone fucking is an MMA fighter and everyone's an MMA journalist and shit. And I'm like yo, those are you gotta like earn your dues in those type. Those yeah. are those are not easy jobs and fighting especially is not an easy job. But but like you know if, if you you're gonna get shit on, you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get mm-hmm. injured. You're gonna get rejected. Like it's a different type of approach that you have to have mentally. So, 100 percent agree. And, and it's a lifestyle. You know, every you know when I've talked to prospects, it's not it's not you go to the gym and you turn it around. I mean, that lifestyle goes through the day and day and day. You know, um, yeah, it, 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 takes, it doesn't stop. And it takes time. Yeah, it takes time to get there. Mm-hmm. And now, last one for me here. You know, UFC 260, huge card. You know, I'm sure you'll be fighting for that performance bonus. Uh, you know, so we got to see something special. Got any prediction for us for UFC 260? Yeah, man, a lot of a, a lot of ass kicking, man. I'm going out there, man. I'm, I'm going out there to, to do what I do best, and that's that show out. Um, like I like to finish fights no matter what. Like I said, I haven't got a, a good violent knockout in the UFC yet, so that would be cool to get something really spectacular type knock. I've been working on a couple of tricky things, so if he. If he shows it to me, I'll take it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm definitely going out there to get win bonus again. Like I said, I'm fucking 34. Like let's be realistic. It takes four or five years to get to a world title. At lightweight, it takes six years. Like you know, it takes six years to get to a world title. That's how long it takes. Like you yep. need to be like ten fight win streaks, unless you like whip your dick out or something. <laughs> like maybe maybe that changes things. I don't know. But uh, it's a popularity contest. Yeah. And with and with our weight class, it's uh, there's it's a congested weight class. There's so many fucking people. Yep. So I mean, yeah, I'm I'm here to I'm here to I'm here for a a fun time, not a long time. So I'm I'm yep. here to entertain and do and do my thing. So I'm gonna go out there and and uh, see if he's willing to go to hell and back and Gary. And I think uh, I can speak for all of us fans, you know, uh, watching the fights that we're we're looking forward to that fun time at uh, UFC 260. Man, thank you yes. very much, Kama. I appreciate it. Awesome, man. Thanks, brother.